Hello, everybody. It is so good to see you. How are you? I hope you guys are well. Um, I have returned here to YouTube. Yes, I have been taking a bit of a break, a much needed break from YouTube um, and really from reading too much regularly. Um, I have still been active on Patreon. Um, so if you haven't joined Patreon um, and you still want to get some messages and you're interested in doing it, go ahead and check it out. Um, to be honest with you, right now uh, I'm going to be more active on Patreon than I am um, on YouTube. Um, there's a big shift happening for me in terms of um, reacclimation of my life and, and reappropriation of my energies uh, into situations and circumstances and projects that are necessary for me to move into at this time. Um, I don't even want to say anything like it's like a better fit or anything. It's just where I'm meant to be going at this time. Doesn't mean that I am not, I, I'm giving up on readings altogether. I am still available for private readings. If you guys are interested in a private reading um, and you haven't gotten one recently or for a while or you never have and you would like to get one with me, a, a private session with me, whether that be a tarot session or maybe even a true sidereal astrology session maybe a combination of both definitely hit me up my email is still in the description box below along with the list of the readings that i offer and my email address obviously you know shoot me an email let me know you're interested and i'd be happy to get you all hooked up um, and also if you're interested in joining patreon understand that there are some tiers there are two specific tiers that either give you a 10 percent or a 20 percent discount on your readings your personal sessions um, depending on which tier you sign up for. And there's also still a tier in which you get all of the Patreon content plus one 30-minute uh, session with me, whether that's a recorded reading or a live session um, included. Oh, shoot. I hope you guys could hear me. <laughs> included in um, your subscription, okay? So, um, yeah, check out Patreon if you want to do that. Um, but anyway... Uh, that's really where I'm going to be focusing my collective reading efforts right now in Patreon. And it's, that's usually, I'm keeping that to about two, twice a week. All right, it's not a daily thing. It's not even always twice a week consistently, but that seems to be the framework for how this energy is flowing for me right now. I do feel like part of this might be uh, um, part of my me retreating or retracting from doing readings so much i feel like it does have something to do with mars being in retrograde um as a um true sidereal aries sun i'm actually really enjoying mars retrograde energy uh because it's bringing in a much needed and a very very beneficial shift in my mode of expression my drive my mode of action uh, you know the what it is i'm pursuing in my life my aries mars type energy my mars it's bringing a big change for that in that for me um and it's a much needed change and i'm in a point in life where i'm able to just allow myself to really go with the flow and allow the shift to happen not really resist it and so in that aspect in that sense i am actually enjoying Mars retrograde quite a bit um, because of this shift, this change that it's bringing into my life. But because of that also, I do feel like some of my reading work needs to be curtailed a bit. Um, I, and I don't... Interesting, the Spirit wants me to talk about this right now, but I'm going to say this and then we're going to get into the topic of today, what I want to share with you guys in this session. Um, I do feel like a lot of my reading work needs to be curtailed until... Mars goes direct, and that's not going to be until late March of 2023. Already, my ego is kind of like, um, that's a really long time. I don't know if I should really do that. But then the spirit part of me is like, oh, yes, that sounds like a really nice break. And then the conscious part of me, the human part of me, is in such a place of temperance and equilibrium where I'm like, okay, well, if spirit is saying that's the best thing to do, that's ideal, then I might just do it just and not worry about it just let it happen because i've circumstances over the last few months have really 
solidified my stance in allowing things to just happen, just going with the flow and not resisting it. If it goes against what I thought consciously or logically would have been the right choice to do or the right thing to do, but now the circumstances are presenting themselves differently and I have to do something wildly different, I'm just gonna go with it. You know what I mean? So that's where I am right now. So that's what I'm feeling. Not to really, <laughs> not to really uh, cause any anticipation for you guys, but We'll see what happens, but that's where I am right now. That's why I haven't been around on YouTube lately. Um, I am taking a much needed break for that. And I've needed that for a long time, actually, but I wasn't going to allow myself to do it until I had something else that I could place my efforts and focus into. Um, and that has presented itself recently. And so that's where I, what, that's, that's what's been going on. I am well, everything is beautiful. Everything is great. Everything is much better than actually it has been in a very long time. So um, some of you have reached out for in concern and thank you for reaching out. I really truly love you and appreciate you for that. Okay, enough of that. Let's get into the topic of today because this right here is just supposed to be a quick intro, but obviously there's so much for me to say after um, coming back for so long. But what you are about to see in this session is actually a reading, a reading that I recorded for Patreon a few days ago. Now, um, there are, are, are a number of synchronicities involved. I'll try to get through them um, as quickly as possible, but I do want to share these with you um, because I want to bring awareness and conscious awareness, uh, physical awareness to these synchronicities to help solidify them, to help solidify the connection with them. And acknowledgement is a really wonderful, uh, a really beautiful, wonderful, effective way of doing this. So um, when I first did this reading, uh, I think it was right after I finished recording it, I, one of the first thoughts that I have was, I might want to share this with the greater YouTube collective. And that felt kind of good because I hadn't done anything for the collective for a while. So here we are. Excellent. So I was kind of, I was happy with it. I was accepting of it in that moment. Um, but I didn't jump at it because I was also kind of like, mm, that may be a little bit of what my, of my ego kind of perking up because of the nature of the reading. And I am going to officially say this. This is a route about surrounding, um, focused around, this is about the twin flame journey, okay? So this is in fact a twin flame message, even though some of my delivery in the original, in the first video or the, the, the original recording was kind of like, it could be anything and it still can be anything, but as time has progressed and as I've reached this moment of now officially wanting to share it with the greater collective, I do fully understand that it is a twin flame message, okay? Um, so just gonna throw that out there. But also understand guys that even if you don't resonate with the twin flame journey or anything like that, um, you don't find yourself on the twin flame journey, there still be, could be some very deep and profound messages in this reading, in this session here for you. So if you are feeling intrigued, even, even though you may not have, not have anything to do with the Twin Flame journey, please follow your intuition and watch the rest of the video because there could be some really valuable messages in it for you. Now, um, the message surrounds music. And in the original video, um, there was a there is a specific song that kind of kicked off this the flow of this reading, the channel of this reading. It's by a, a an electronic band. Y'all know me; I love electro and house music and all that shit. But um, it's by an electronic band that goes by the name of Phantoms. Now, in the original video, I said it's the Phantoms. It's not the Phantoms. It's just Phantoms. P H A N T O M S. Um, the first song is a song that unfortunately cannot be found in its entirety on YouTube, but it is on streaming devices, um, Spotify, uh, streaming, I'm sorry, streaming uh, services, so definitely Spotify. I know it's on Spotify because I found it there. Um, it's on Spotify and I'm sure Apple Music, iTunes Music, all that kind of stuff. Maybe even, it's I'm probably on YouTube's music, YouTube Music as well, I'm not sure. Anyway, well maybe not if it's not on YouTube, I don't know, whatever. But it's it, the, the music involved with these messages is very important. So I'm really encouraging you guys, you are really encouraged by spirit, if, especially if this reading, if this message resonates with you, check out the music because what I've learned, um, especially on this Twin Flame journey, music is always very important for many of us. It carries certain feelings, certain understandings, certain messages, certain perspectives that we don't necessarily, are not able to really necessarily convey in this type of general conversational manner, okay? So whenever music comes through in terms of a Twin Flame message for you, whether it's from a reader that you follow specifically regularly or someone random that has a 
resonant message for you or if it's coming from you within you personally, always pay very close attention to the music, how the music makes you feel, what it inspires within you, what it brings up within you, what it causes you to see, to think about, to to the, whatever, you know, pay very close attention to the, what, how the music affects you in certain ways. So the first song is Tried to Be Nice to You. It is by Phantoms and Haley, I believe her name is. Again, the information is in the description box below. However, the only version that's available on YouTube is an acoustic version, which is still a good version, but it's not the full version of the song. All, all of, and when you're listening to the music for both of these songs, pay close attention to the lyrics because the lyrics are very important. Okay, but that's the first song. Tried to be nice to you by Phantoms. Just do tried to be nice to you, Phantoms, in a streaming service, and you'll find it. It's off an album that came out in 2017. I believe it's a self-titled album, and that's a whole thing. I'll let that the 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 next part of this video explain all that but then also I wanted to record this intro also because there's an update there's a second song now this message for the twin flame collective right now is very much surrounding um, how the tables may have been turned on the masculine and the feminine whereas the feminine was the chaser in the past now the masculine even though he or she may not find themselves actually acting as the chaser, there is a change in perspective that is allowing the masculine to see the chaser side of this situation. But unfortunately, it's coming at a point where the feminine is actually 100% letting this person go. And that's why, or this representation of the masculine go, even though you guys may have lifetimes upon lifetimes with each other, that's kind of the point. If you're not, if the two of you are not making the moves and the strides and are not at least not making the effort to try and wake up if you have part individuals who have been doing this for centuries who have been doing this for multiple multiple lifetimes still finding themselves sticking staying rooted in the toxic or in the low vibrational or in the non-awakened state there is a big shift happening for those who have chosen to step into this level of ascension whereas those individuals who quite frankly are really the feminine or those individuals who are accepting the energy of the feminine rather than just the masculine but and and also are balancing masculine and feminine within themselves are finding a sense of wholeness for those who are finding this sense of wholeness who have partners or individuals twin flames who are choosing not to do that those who are choosing to do so are being moved forward and those who are not are being left behind and are effectively being let go of and that's where the second song comes in um, letting me go by phantoms it's off their most recent album that came out in 2022 letting me go. So, um, and also whatever I'm able to find is going to be listed in the, um, a, a way to find this music is going to be listed in the description box. Um, and so there is an absolutely, uh, this is a moment, this is a turning point for the collective where people are starting to, I'm hearing are losing out, are actually starting to miss out, are actually starting to receive the effects of their non-compliance and i don't even like to say it that way because it's not about conformity but it is about complying with um taking up the charge of the mission that you find yourself in and that is ascension you know and when you find yourself in the twin flame situation it's really serious like you have seriously chosen consciously and spiritually you have chosen to take a massive step up to leave literally i just heard to leave the current paradigm that humanity finds itself in and in order to do that you have to make a very conscious decision and you have to make very conscious changes to your life and you have to look at yourself in the mirror and you have to accept your flaws and you have to commit to working on growing through and with those flaws no matter how long it takes as long as you are committed and are making the effort you will move forward but it's for these individuals who find themselves partnered within other individuals that are consciously choosing to stay silent to stay asleep to stay in the matrix to not accept this one albeit of infinite moment of ascension but unfortunately it's creating some pretty dire consequences because this is kind of like a now or never moment for the collective um, and so that's what this message is surrounding so check out the, the the next part of this video but also maybe listen to the songs first and then go check out the rest of the video um, or you can check out the rest of the video and then listen to the music, but understand that the music is very, very important. Okay, I'm going to leave it there because 
we're, we're almost 20 minutes in already and the next part of this video is like almost an hour long so i love you guys check out patreon if you would like more readings more regular readings from me um right now um if you do want a personal reading i am available for that check the information in the description box below but as far as youtube i am going to be keeping that to quite a minimum for the foreseeable future just because of the shift in the energies but i am not completely gone okay and I will be coming back to YouTube every once in a while, like moments like this where I want to share something or just do an update. Maybe I'll do a live stream around New Year's. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Anyway, I love you guys. Definitely leave me in the, a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know how this resonates for you, how where you find yourself in this moment. Um, and again, if you'd like a personal reading, I am available. Yeah, I love you. Okay, there's one more aspect to this that actually um, I forgot to mention in the very beginning of this uh, video um, and thought maybe I could let go, but actually no, I, I, it's a actually a very important part of this so and it's, it has to do with the synchronicities that were involved in terms of this situation and these actual synchronicities helped me to understand the fact solidify in my feeling that this is in fact a twin flame uh, message it's intended to be mostly a twin flame message but of course it can resonate for anybody okay because the, the, the message is still universal it's about love whatever um and it, okay so it starts here while i was d channeling the reading i was seeing um, us uh, as these individuals that are part of this twin flame collective energy and um, uh, there's a part in the end of the reading where I'm uh, attributing the collective to a group of seeds that have been uh, from a plant that have been sown and um, in, in essence you know all of these seeds are an abundance of opportunities for this the plant to propagate itself and i didn't say this in the in in the moment that i was channeling it because i couldn't understand it quite well enough but now in hindsight with this also this synchronicity i'm seeing it, it the, the message is coming through deeper so i want to share it with you guys and then you can watch it later um, in the rest of the video but we as this collective of twin flame energies so, so to speak each and every one of us are an individual seed um, that are meant to uh, i'm hearing if this is the proper terminology irrigate the land and propagate itself and we are propagating the plant of love true love you could call it unconditional love but in essence it's real just pure 100 percent true love okay and this is later on you'll see where this connects to this connects to the grand stand the crusade of love that you seem to be on we seem to be on here even though you may not want to call it that at this point anymore right okay but you're taking a stand and you are a seed of this love and sometimes those seeds that are sown don't make it you know and um that doesn't mean it's the end for them maybe they die before they grow to full maturity from there which they can bloom and flower and then give this love they've been cultivating within themselves again you'll understand later but sometimes they don't make it but then that's why there are so many seeds and that's why there are so many opportunities and just because we may not be making it with this in initial intended situation it does not mean that the mission is over it does not mean you don't still have something to stand for and what you're standing for still is love real true love okay now the synchronicity that helped me understand this and wrap this all up was this earlier today I was um, doing running some errands and I had finished my errands and I was driving back home and it was a bright beautiful sunny morning and I was listening to some really good music and I was thinking about this situation and I was thinking about confirming with myself whether or not I actually wanted to share this message with the greater YouTube and world collective and because it was really meant to be shared it was not from some egoic place where I'm trying to capitalize on you know the twin flame energy and blah 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 get a bunch of recognition no this is a message that is meant for the greater collective as well um, and so I'm going to share it but what confirmed it was I was driving up the mountain and as I came to a certain spot I saw a flock of I think pigeons shift direction like shift their their, their their flight their flight path right over right over me in my line of sight and collectively move in a different direction and and that just seeing that flock of birds right there was confirmation enough that this is a collective message it's coming from birds it's coming from the angels it's coming from the heavens it's coming from the higher awareness and it's a collective message it's this message that we are all collectively energetically a part of we are so that right there was said to me okay there's the synchronicity that's the confirmation this is a collective message we're sharing this with the greater collective but this also ties into the message that is on uh, for the collective right now because collectively we are all shifting 
in our direction. We are all shifting in our path. We are, and we're all doing this consciously together as a group, um, and shifting into a new pathway in which this love, this true love, unconditional love, if you want to call it that, can be further ir propagated and irrigated. I don't know why I'm hearing both of those terms, but take it as it resonates. If, if it's the proper terminology, then use it. If not, trash it. But you get what I'm saying. Okay. Yes. Excellent. Let's get into the rest of the video. <laughs> Hello. Happy hump day. Yay. Bing. It is Wednesday, December 14th. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, timeless reading. Dates don't matter. But if you are watching this on wednesday december 14th or any other wednesday happy hump day so coming through with the reading today um was feeling called to do one so here we are and i we're talking about love today there is a song that to be quite honest with you is absolutely necessary for you to listen to um to really connect with this reading to connect with this message to help get the part of the perspective of what we're trying to talk about here um it is a song by a group called the phantoms the t-h-e phantoms p-h-a-n-t-o-m-s um very good band electronic i love them uh but it's this one song called tried to be nice um and it's a feminine voice female singer but the perspective could be male or female really it's quite universal um but it's a song that talks about a connection that was made between two people. It was great in the beginning, so hot, so hot, and then all of a sudden, cold feet, full stop. Um, and the the person that this per that this song or the perspective that this song is being sung from is the perspective of an individual that's like, look, I'm had I've had enough of this. This is fucking ridiculous. Um, I tried to be nice to you. I tried to let you, you, you made it very clear to me that you need someone to, to let you let you down easy or let you off easy. Um, and actually the phrase let you off easy to me has always stood out as an individual that is not very self-aware. Um, is probably very egotistical, maybe even really selfish, maybe a bit of a brat or something like that, um, emotionally un, un, uh, irresponsible even, um, and just needs, it's just thrashing around all over the place. And the person that is singing this song from this perspective is saying like, you need me to, you need somebody that's gonna let you off easy, or you need uh, let you off easy, or you need someone that's just gonna, um, you know, look the other way or do kind of like, mm, boys will be boys type of, event. you know what I mean? And it could be male or female that is needing this but that's part of the perspective of this song and that always stood out to me very clearly now um the so the, the then the rest of the song goes on to say this is anything this could be anything but love um and and the, and the, the message of this song very much plays to some of the twin flame dynamic this is a song that i found while going through the heat of the twin flame situation but by the time I found this song, I was well deep into the heat of the situation in which my perspective was starting to shift to the obvious or the reality of the situation instead of the fantasy of all the feelings and, and, and conjecture and all that, right? Okay. Um, now, I do want to say we could be talking about Twin Flame Energies here. I also want to say that the, with this song, the perspective can work from both sides, both from the feminine side. If, uh, for example, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, in terms of like if we're speaking of this in like the two, terms of the Twin Flame situation, it could be from both sides, both the feminine and the masculine side, both light and toxic. Okay. Both sides. Um, it's a very universal song. Um, I highly recommend if this is already starting to pique your interest or ultimately if this reading ends up resonating for you, please listen to this song. But specifically, listen to it where you can see the lyrics as well. So if you're on Spotify, you could totally do it that way. The lyrics are literally on Spotify um, with the song. Play the song and then if you look into it, there's a little tab that says lyrics tap that and the lyrics will scroll as the song plays you could do it on youtube you could do it anywhere but make sure that you are paying attention to the lyrics okay because it's the the story that's being told in this song that th is what we're modeling the topic of this reading after all right so that's your um homework um but we could be talking twin flame energy here um so if this does end up resonating for you in that way then go ahead and take it. But you also don't have to resonate with it. This doesn't also have to be anything about Twin Flame. 
this could just be general relationships. I do feel like it's a romantic thing right now, so we're going to keep that. But this could, again, it's a general reading. It's an open reading. Um, place it in your life however it fits. I have a number of cards here. Part of what I w was feeling inspired to do was to get a perspective of both parties, maybe a, kind of like a mirror perspective, um, using two tarot decks, and then the, the golden universal tarot would be the, the, the divine perspective or the universal perspective, the higher perspective, instead of the individualized and um, um, polarized perspectives, okay? Uh, so we could be looking at this from the masculine feminine perspective. So if you, if this resonates for you in terms of the twin flame situation and you want to look at it from the masculine feminine perspective, whether that be the masculine feminine within yourself or a specific representation of the masculine or the feminine external to you in terms of that dynamic, go ahead, uh, look at it that way. This could just be a, ro a general romantic partner, not necessarily twin flame or romantic situation. Go ahead. For some of you, this could be, um, something, something that's going on with someone close to you that you may either be involved in or heavily involved in. What I'm hearing is the person or maybe the people, but specifically the person that this really could resonate for in terms of an, uh, an external situation as in someone else, friend or family member going through this. I he I'm hearing that somehow you are directly involved with this, heavily involved with this. It could be that you stuck, <laughs> it could be that you stuck your fingers in the well, not necessarily the cookie jar, but where they don't belong or where it stuck your nose where you don't, be where it doesn't necessarily belong. Not necessarily that this is malicious or maybe you were just feeling benevolent and now all of a sudden you find yourself in the middle of a situation that has nothing to do with you, that you really don't need to be a part of, that you shouldn't have gotten involved with. Like maybe you regret getting involved with it now. I don't know. This <laughs> total tangent. Someone out there is that's for. But um, let's see. What else? How else? This also could resonate for you in terms of just a, a friend or family member, a platonic relationship, okay? But that is also where this could be a situation in, in which we're reaching a situation that this is someone else's situation that you find yourself involved with, okay? Could be a parent also for someone. All right. Now, with this song, I would say if you haven't listened to the song yet, pause and listen to the song. The link is down below, both in Patreon and on YouTube, I think. Depends. It's somewhere. Just it depends. I'll try and put it both places just in case to make to make it easier to get to. Um, and I'll link a YouTube video with the lyrics. Okay, excellent. Um, with this message comes a feeling of I'm hearing divine independence. I am definitely seeing the nine of pentacles energy here, but I'm feeling a very strong and sturdy sense of independence. And when it comes to relating to love and or romance, or maybe even just at the very least plat uh, personal, interpersonal relationships, there is a feeling of deep detachment, strong, extreme detachment, almost as if in some cases, some of us are looking at relationships with the people around us and are saying to themselves, I could take it, I could leave it. Real strong indifference. This is not bad. Because what I'm hearing from Spirit in terms of this is Spirit is calling this divine Mm. At first, they were saying divine dependence. At least, no, at first what I was hearing was divine dependence. But what I'm hearing is divine interdependence. I was originally taking that as um, self-sufficiency. I was seeing the Nine of Pentacles energy. Sovereignty. But what they're saying is they're calling this energy divine interdependence, meaning that we are all inter interdependent of each other to some capacity. Okay. Whether it is purely to have the experiences we are desiring or needing to experience in order to, ex to achieve soul growth and expansion. Okay. We are divinely interdependent of each other in terms of that. But when it comes to... Okay, when it comes to a level of, what is the word that I'm looking for? D um, 
not necessarily sovereignty. The nine of pentacles energy, what is that? Self-sufficiency, self-dependence. When it comes to a level of self-sufficiency, you are so aloof, disconnected, or this energy is so like mm, interpersonal relationships. I could take it, I could leave it. It's like that because, or you have that sense of detachment because of the sense of dependence, the, the, the sense of not necessarily, oh God, I'm screwing this up. The, the word is escaping me. The, 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 the level of sovereignty you have gained. You are not needing external sources for your basic resources. You know, the, 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 for whatever this is for you specifically, what it is you need to be sustained on a baseline level as a, as, an, as a being, as an individual, right? Whatever it is you need for basic sustenance and basic sustainment and basic vitality and whatever, you have that in abundance, I'm hearing. Whereas in the past, you could have been experiencing situations in which you were you had externalized that that resource but now the interdependence is strong enough within you they are calling this interdependence and what i'm seeing with this word interdependence is a web a web a network of resource delivery that sustains all living beings and the spirit is calling this a level of inter interdependence. You are solid here, meaning you understand that you're going to be taken of, care of. You know that you will have what it is you are needing. You are not dependent on someone else. A level of codependency has been conquered here. And in the conquering of that codependency, there is an aloofness. Now I've been personally experiencing this, experiencing this in terms of love. And recently I have, because I have been going through a process of questioning why it is I am, I have had this narrative about me of needing to have a boyfriend or a partner. And initially my understanding of that came from my lack of feeling loved as a kid. And so wanting, and so now externalizing that need for love and self and love and acceptance really externalizing that and saying well for me to be happy for me to replace what it is i feel i have lost for me to fill this hole that i feel i have in my heart i need to have a a a, a romantic re connection with another man because I'm gay, right? That, that was like a whole thing being uh, that, I mean, this is so, this is so complicated, but let's keep it as simple as possible. I needed that externalized relationship to feel validated, to feel whole, to feel loved and accepted, to feel the love and acceptance that I didn't feel when I was younger or earlier in life. It's not even about being younger necessarily, really. It's more about what I experienced early in life and now how that has shaped me and now how I've grown out of it uh, later on. Okay. So now that I have gotten to a point where that level of codependency has been squashed, has been eradicated, now I look at love and romance and I'm like, God, now the pendulum has kind of swung to a point where it's like, you know, I don't even know if I'm ever going to have a relationship really again because I've had one. You know, I was married. And if this triggers you, it triggers you. Please don't take this the wrong way. But if it triggers you, it triggers you. That relationship that I had, that marriage that I had, was a quintessential codependent human relationship of our time. Okay? Specifically. Our time. This era of humanity. Not in a past situation. No, how it would look today. Okay. It was. It was a quintessential representation of that level of codependency. Many marriages are just codependency, are built upon codependency. Traditional marriages. And that's not even supposed to be a slight. If you look back in the previous, it, it, back in history, people were marrying for money, for land, for material, for affluence, for status. Codependency, 100%, okay? That's a whole, okay, so that's a whole other tangent. But now, but see, I left that marriage saying to myself, I would like to get married again. For the five years since, 
has it been five years, four or five years, whatever, five years about. Since I left that marriage, that relationship, I have been looking for another relationship that would be ideally better and healthier than that one, but still was that dynamic, still was that structure, really. Thinking, oh, well, I could have it now or I could work towards it now because I had that experience and I'm growing and I'm learning from it and I still kind of want this, but it was still codependent at the very core of it i i don't know if i can iterate to you how it was specifically codependent but i can tell you it was still codependent and now i find myself in this pendulum swing to the opposite end to the opposite polarity of like i don't even just like i'm so comfortable in my single life that i don't know how i would actually be able to have a relationship I'm so comfortable on my own. I'm so comfortable in my independence. There's the word I was looking for, independence. Anyway, I'm so comfortable in it. I don't know how another person would fit into my life. So at this point, I am very much in alignment with this song. And there's a, the very last line of the song is, no more Mr. Nice Guy, gonna be the last time I fall in love. So hit me up if you're trying to fuck sometime. That's totally the energy I'm in right now. And it's not like I'm sitting here saying to myself, oh, fuck love, I don't want love. No, I do want it. But I'm not chomping at the bit for it anymore. I'm not desperate for it. I'm not pining after it. I'm, look, I'm, I'm being real serious with myself and maybe this pendulum swing is just me moving into a more logical mindset because it's not like this pendulum swing for me is fuck love, I don't want it. It's no, wait a second, I don't even know if, how, how I could have it right now. I am so comfortable <laughs> in my single life. I don't even know how I could have it right now. And really, as I'm saying this, you guys, I'm hearing spirits say to me, well, Eric, really, you just haven't found the right person because I feel my higher self or something coming through saying, when you find that right person, it will click. You will want to be in that place. You so, so part of the example here is, you know, I've been online meeting people meeting up with people, blah, blah, blah. I, um, I ran, I, I found, I, I reconnected with someone online that I met out in the streets <laughs> here. Um, and we, t we chatted when we met in the, in out and about, but we, it never went anywhere. Um, and then I found him online. And so we connected and we've been kind of talking, kind of hanging out. And that was during the month that Fiona hit. That was October. We reconnected in October, saw each other a few times. Um, and then I moved back here and just completely forgot about him because also there was kind of drama there. And I was like, mm, I don't need that. But you know what I mean? So I just kind of like left it alone. And he resurfaced right around the, the full moon, actually. He resurfaced. He came by. He was talking to me, blah, blah, blah. We, we reconnected. He came by while I was working uh, one night and we, we chatted, blah, 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 whatnot, whatever, whoop de whoop And then he was like, okay, well, call me as he left. He was like, call me. I was like, okay. And I'm sitting here sincerely saying to myself, Eric, do you really have any intentions of calling that man? And I'm sitting here like, no. Because I'm seeing in that, that that could be, that, that, that relationship with him, I know, would be extremely codependent and I want nothing to do with it. But he's a very nice guy. But I'm looking at that like, I know I don't want to get into that. And there are elements to that relationship that could potentially be pretty good, but that's not what I'm in alignment with anymore. So I'm like, mm, no. So that's part of, that's coloring part of what I'm trying to say here. And that's part of why um, spirit is coming through saying, Eric, you, when the right person comes around, you will feel the inspiration to call that person, to want to see them, to want to hang out, to want to have them around, blah, blah, blah. It will just fit when the right person comes. But what I'm talking about, I guess, is right now, for me, this is how the energy is representing itself. I'm kind of like, mm, I'm very much that person. No more Mr. Nice Guy. I'm not really trying to fall in love. So like, if you want to fuck, let me know. But like, other than that, <laughs> I'm good. I'm going to stay up here in my sanctuary and not call nobody because I don't want to talk to nobody. And it's not like I, it's not like I hate y'all. I just don't want to talk to anybody. I'm good. Is that where we are right now, guys? I have so many cards here and I hope you guys are following 20 minutes into this so far. I hope you're following. 
So where are we going with this spirit? I, I, I want to break this up. I have three decks here. I want to look at the polarized sides of this situation. Some of you have a situation in which you've got someone chomping at the bit for you, and I, I'm seeing you literally hold them at arm's length like... Mm. Trying to be nice. See, there goes that phrase, uh, that, that line again. I tried to be nice to you. I didn't think I could be so harsh. I didn't think I was being so... I, I, I tried to be nice. And I didn't think I could make your heart so obsessed. Like, whoa. I tried to be nice to you. You need someone to let you off easy. But you know what? This ain't anything. This could be anything but love. Okay, some of you have a specific situation like that going on right now, whether you see or not, because I'm even looking at my life from that lens and saying, mm, yeah, okay, I see that in some places. Okay. See, but now I'm the one that's standing here at arm's length like, no, boo-boo. No, this ain't love, baby. But, mm, I promise you it's not. Because I've been there. And that's where the twin flame situation comes in. Because I'm also looking at the lyrics of this song and looking back on my history and what I did and how I experienced it, how I reacted, how I responded, how I expressed myself and all that stuff. And I could see, I see him standing here, standing there with me at arm's length like, no, boo-boo, this is not what you think it is. Talk about trigger worthy. <laughs> So in some cases, we are doing a traditional twin flame reading. Last, masculine and feminine. This is the masculine side. Now, it could be that. It could be the masculine and feminine within you, if this does resonate as the twin flame. Um, or this is just side A versus side B, okay? If you have this specifically going on with someone or if this is just like you're just in this energy and you're seeing this around you and you're kind of questioning, well, why do I feel like this? We're going to look at the sides. Okay, side A or the masculine. Two more shuffles. That's one. That's two. And then we have side B in the feminine. All right. Looking at the polarized perspectives here. And then um, we're going to use the Golden Universal Tarot to get the I'm literally seeing the parent in between the two siblings that are quarreling. That's what the Golden Universal perspective is going to be. The mommy and daddy perspective, the granddaddy perspective, the higher perspective, the divine spirit. This is the feminine. Last shuffle. All right. Cool. So we're going to look at the masculine first, or side A. Um, and actually place, your, place yourself wherever this fits. In some cases, the masculine feels like that aloof perspective. So if this does resonate for you as a twin flame situation, the roles could now energetically have been reversed. Where you found yourself in the feminine, codependent, like attached, codependent, um, codependent in terms of attachment, a very Queen of Cups reversed type energy. Now you find yourself in the masculine energy of aloofness and detachment. You've gone from the realm of emotion to the realm of logic. I'm very much seeing a air, logical air energy for this. The masculine or perspective or side A. Okay. What's going on here? What's going on here? What's in this perspective? Ooh. First card out is the Three of Wands. It did fly out and fall on the floor. That's not necessary to look at for perspective. Okay, Three of Wands. So first thing that I'm getting from this side of the equation, this could be you or it could be the other person or another person. First and foremost, this person or this energy, this perspective is very much future oriented. So I'm feeling you are very business oriented right now or this person is, um, career and finances. I feel like you're trying to build something. I feel like you're trying to build a life for yourself. And you're not really concerned with anything else or anyone else. This could be a very selfish perspective. It is fairly narrow-minded, um, and it, but it, at its core, it does not feel malicious. It feels like you or this person could get lost or lose sight of others in your focus. Three of Wands. 
your focus on what it is specifically that you're trying to build. I'm getting a very strong building energy with this three of wands. Similar to the three of pentacles, the three of pentacles is all about physical, physically crafting something and maybe even teamwork with that too. That's the three of pentacles, but it's the three energy of building that I'm getting here that in this three of wands, there's passion, there's desire, there's future forward focus. Uh, and, and it could very well be that your future focus is very much oriented around having a family. But I'm also getting with this Three of Wands energy, there's a very passionate energy surrounding the practical aspects of building what is necessary to have that future or to have a specific certain future. This doesn't have to be malicious and narcissistic and selfish in terms of just building a future for yourself. This could be very well, very well be you working on setting yourself up to have a future with a family because then even from the three of wands comes the four of wands. And that's where other people come in, that the four of wands. But you see, there's only one individual here on the three of wands. So you could be very much focused right now on building your empire or at least building what it is you would ultimately or will ultimately bring to the table in terms of a partnership, in terms of coming together with another person to then build a greater empire. Okay. Okay. Continue with this perspective here. Masculine side A. Eight of Swords is next. There's a sense of duty here. You feel trapped somehow this person feels trapped there is a bit of a perspective here in terms of i cannot move forward i am trapped here i'm seeing okay this is where some of the negative side of this is coming from i'm seeing with this eight of swords here these are all the logical reasons as to why you or this person must stand alone even if it's just temporarily even if it's just for this time period this is these are all the reasons the eight of swords has trapped you or this person logically in this space of, I cannot move forward until something specific has been achieved. Hmm. Masculine side A. Oh, the fool. Okay. So three of wands, eight of swords, but then the fool. This is what this person wants you to see. Or this is what you may be unconsciously projecting towards people. This fool energy is not bad. There is some sort of deception here. There is because there are two more cards that came out face down. So this is the face of the situation. This is what... This is what you are projecting for others to see, or this is what this person is showing to you or showing to others. There's a sense of pride here. There's a sense of ego here. There's a sense of putting on a brave face, putting up an appearance, very close to the Six of Wands energy, to be honest. I'm getting a bit of hoitiness. Stuck up, stick up your ass. Rigidness. There is something, there is a very specific thing that I need to achieve. And with the fool here, I'm going to go after it. That's what's on the surface. But what's underneath the surface is the two of cups and the four of pentacles reversed. These came out face down. This Four of Pentacles reversed reads as an over-dependency on a certain physical outcome, appearance, and or representation. This Four of Pentacles reversed is similar to the Three of Wands. It's this energy that this person or you with this Three of Wands is focusing on, is trying to achieve, Spirit is saying, but recognize that this Four of Pentacles energy is reversed. That's not good. It's misplaced. It's out of alignment. I also heard it's out of the ordinary somehow.
it's out of the spiritual ordinary somehow. And Spirit is saying to me, is translating that as, well, there are many different ways that, that individual souls can align in a romantic way and have a beautiful, flourishing relationship. But humans get caught up in specific ways of seeing things, of things being physically rep represented, and that's mostly because of the judgments of others. And that's where the, some of the Four of Pentacles reversed is getting twisted up, is generating, is coming from. Oh, okay. I hope this is making sense, you guys. Overall energy at the bottom of the deck for this side of the pers is the Knight of Wands. I'm trying to be as honest with I can, as I can with myself about this energy, because like I said, I am kind of finding myself in this perspective as well. And But then also there's something else that's coming through here. I mean, I'm kind of seeing myself here a little bit, but also not necessarily. Oh. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Four of Pentacles reversed. Here's another way of looking at it. The phrase out of the ordinary. Could be his perspective of you are looking for something that is out of the ordinary. I'm getting all mixed up here. Really what I want to do is look at the other perspective before I go too much deeper. Okay, so the feminine, feminine side or side B. In some cases, this feels like the more codependent one, but they were both B. Oh, shit. Feminine side, side B. What is going on here, spirit? What is this energy? Okay, so the feminine side is starting off with the four of wands. Three of Cups, the Hermit, and the Ace of Wands. <laughs> Overall energy is the Knight of Cups. There's definitely a mirroring energy going on here, because remember the overall energy for side A or the masculine is the Knight of Wands. And, and what I want to say about this now is now, and this is exactly why Spirit was saying to me, Eric, look at the other side next before you go too much further, because now this looks like two sides of you or of one person. It feels like your masculine and your feminine are quite balanced. And from the masculine side, maybe this Eight of Swords isn't so bad. Maybe this Four of Pentacles it reversed is you building that foundation. From a masculine perspective, and I want to say quite healthy and balanced masculine perspective, there is a very real reason why you are cordoning yourself off. And what makes this Eight of Swords energy not bad is the fact that in the feminine, you have the hermit. There's a very real reason as to why you or this individual is staying to themselves. And it's because of a desire for love and true companionship. Overall energy is Knight of Cups and then the Three of Cups. It's building this foundation that will bring in the love that is necessary. So really, if you find yourself in this level of, alo of aloofness, it's for a good reason. And this is exactly why Spirit was saying to me, Eric, when the right individual shows up in obviously the proper timing, that's when you will be kicked into gear. 
to pursue this, to engage with this relationship. And that's what it looks like you're looking for here. From the feminine perspective, from the internal subconscious perspective, you are seeking this four of wands. And from the external masculine perspective, from the conscious perspective, you are pursuing that four of wands. So look, we can fuck. We can get down and dirty. We can do all them nasty things. But when it comes to love, mm, I can hold off on that for now. Because I'm building my empire. I'm hearing I'm building my fortune even. Keep in mind, your fortune doesn't have to be a hefty bank account. Your fortune could be whatever it is you provide, materially speaking, to the foundation of this empire, to this relationship, whatever. Let's get into the divine matrix of things. I want to start clarifying things. Um, we're going to get an overall perspective, but I want to clarify some things specifically. And we're going to use the Golden Universal deck for that. You have a vision. You have a goal in mind. The Hermit and the Ace of Wands here. And the three, again, is showing up on both sides. But on the feminine side, it's the Three of Cups. That's emotional companionship. That's like what I like to say about in a relationship. You cannot. It is my firm belief that you can't really have a healthy, romantic, free, loving relationship that is free of codependency without being friends with it. Well, you can't really have, I, I, I don't know. I don't, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, uh, how do I say this? I personally feel that the best way to have a really good, solid, romantic relationship is to be friends with them, or at least to be able to be friends with them. You don't have to necessarily have to be friends with them first and then get into the romance. You could start romantic, and then over time, a real friendship builds, and that's really going to help solidify this situation. Three of Cups, Four of Wands, okay? But that's your vision here. That's what you're seeking. That's what you're after. That's what you're pursuing. And it seems that you have shifted into the masculine perspective, a logical perspective in which, okay, well, if I'm going to have that, then there are certain things that are going to be in place first. I do feel like in, if this is resonating, Nine of Cups at the bottom of the deck, if this is resonating for you, happiness, contentment, if this is resonating for you, in terms of the twin flame situation, I do feel that it's very likely the chances are very strong indeed that the roles have reversed now. And when you found yourself in the feminine side once, now you find yourself in the masculine side. But from this, but spirit is really just saying it's a more logical place now. It's like you've gone from, you've learned the lesson of love and now you're in the realm of logic, wisdom gone from the heart no i'm sorry not the not the third eye from the heart to the throat wisdom there's wisdom wisdom is here too but uh, it's one of those things that um ra speaks of going i i, I always confuse this confuse this in the specifics but it's going from the realm of love where basically you may end up experiencing martyrdom because you're just trying to be loving to everything and everyone but then that's when you learn you move on from that step you move to the next step of wisdom which is also the level of self-preservation is where you get into the point where it's saying yes i'm loving and i can be loving and i want to be loving but i'm not going to be loving to the detriment of my own self that's where the logic aspect is coming to into this okay that's also where kind of the masculine perspective is coming in. Man, I hope this is landing. <laughs> One more shuffle from the divine perspective and then we're gonna start clarifying. Uh, uh, uh. Four of pentacles reverse is first. Aha, okay. Hold on. Nope, don't take this yet. All right, four of wands, I'm sorry. Four of pentacles reversed. Justice is the first card out. Legally, this could be legal situations. There, there could be a divorce that needs to be involved. Um, 
But really, this justice feels more, uh-huh, 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 yeah, shit. This justice that has come out here, the first card to clarify, that's Dante. To clarify the Four of Pentacles reversed is justice. This could be a legal situation, some sort of physical form of justice, okay? Having your finances set, having, I don't know, but that's a very materialistic point of view. The bigger picture here is what would bring justice to love, Ace of Cups. And then the Four of Wands. So the Four of Pentacles reversed is absolutely reflecting this vision of the Four of Wands that you have. It's reversed here because you are in the process of creating, pursuing a situation that would bring justice to pure, real, you could even say unconditional love and stability, foundation. This is you preserving yourself, not necessarily being chased, although if that is what you're doing, excellent, good for you. If that's working for you, if that's right for you, good for you. But at least on a romantically committed level, it's like, mm, I'm not ready for that yet. I don't need that yet. I don't even want that yet. It's not that time. We can get down. We can get down and dirty, Ace of Wands. But when it comes to this, Four of Wands, Three of Cups, I'm going to stay independent for now to hold and or pursue my vision. Now there's one last card that's come out here to clarify this Four of Pentacles reversed. It did come out face down. It is the Magician. Dark Lizard, very dark lizard. Defenses. Lizards are the darkest when they are in the wild, when they're having to defend themselves, it just, as I was talking about the magician, it climbed up this pole here, this support beam into my line of vision. It was this big dark thing that climbed up underneath the surface, incognito, incognigro even. <laughs> um, Defense, there, there is a level of defensiveness here. Now, now th that the lizard has come into my line of view, it has lightened. Its dark brown shade has lightened. Defenses, uh, it's continuing to lighten. It's relaxing. There's another lizard that's much, much lighter. Almost opaque, tan, nude color. Smaller. The other one was bigger. Now that, okay, danger. Danger, danger. Um, you're keeping this hidden for potential pitfalls or individuals that may want to sabotage you. That's why the magician came out face down. Overall energy is the Knight of Wands again. The Knight of Wands is on the masculine side. Your pa See, even though you may come off cold and aloof, you are passionate. You know what it is you want. You are not a raging fire anymore. You are a smoldering fire. That's dangerous. Uh, um, well, in some cases, yes, it could be dangerous because if something is smoldering and you don't know it, next thing you know, boop, you've got a raging fire. But it's also dangerous in terms of potency. If they don't know you're smoldering, they don't know something is in the works, they can't prepare for it, they can't try to stop it, they can't try and sabotage it. That's dangerous. But dangerous from a, a, in a good way. Dangerous from a powerful. That's powerful. Ace of Wands is next. Clarify this vision. Ace of Wands. Two of Wands reversed. It's not up in the air anymore. You've decided. You've made your decision. You know what it is you want. You know what it is you want to pursue. And that is why you now find yourself here at the Three of Wands. You've chosen a path. Looks like this person is trying to decide, hmm, which way do I go? What do I want to pursue? What does my empire look like? What is my vision here? Literally, what is my vision? Found it. Got it. There it is. Spotted. Coordinates laid in. Coordinates set. 
literally coordinates set. Holding strong, firm to that vision. And, and, and yes, you're holding strong and firm to it, but it's effortless. You don't have to put any effort towards the pursuit of this because it is natural within you. You have found or you are in a place to understand that if you go with what's naturally within you, you don't have to really do anything other than be it. There's no extra effort. There's no real like blood, sweat and tears, if you want to say. It's really not all that hard. Ooh, but then we have the Knight of Swords, which almost fell off the table. Okay. Warrior energy then. <laughs> oh my god. Knight of Cups is at the bottom of the deck as the overall energy. And on this side, we have the Knight of Cups as the overall energy. Can't make this stuff up. Now, bit of defensiveness going on here. Because time is rolling. The gears are turning. The juices are pumping. It's simmering. Wheel of Fortune. Knight of Swords. In between the Wheel of Fortune and the Knight of Swords, from my perspective here reading this on the table, the Knight of Swords is going, is facing, is moving towards that Wheel of Fortune. I see this as you hustling, shuffling, riding out to that change, to that new timeline, to that changed experience, to that different space. In between, on the path there, face down, you have the fucking lovers. I'm sorry, I feel like I sullied that energy by saying it that way. You have the lovers. The pursuit of happiness is what I just heard. You have something to fight for. This does kind of feel like a crusade. It literally feels like whether you want to call it this or not, it feels like you being a crusader for love. But not just any old love. Real love. Solid love. Substantial love. Stable love. Doesn't have to be with a fucking twin flame. However, the universe brings it to you in terms of it being what it is that you want, if it's what you want, if it's bringing that justice in, then by all means, honey, take it by the hand and ride off into the sunset. So in terms of the twin flame perspective, this could absolutely be you holding a very strict and firm boundary, fully in your awareness and understanding of your true free will and the understanding that the universe will bring you whatever it is your desire to the best of, best of its ability to the best of your ability, I'm hearing, and to align with the highest good of not only yourself, but all involved. And if that means bringing, ultimately bringing in this four of wands energy for you with someone that is not your twin flame, ultimately, if that happens that way, then that is for the greatest good of all. You, the partner that you're with, and that twin flame that seems to be missing out this time. See, but you're solidly aware of that. You are a feminine that has grown substantially. I mean, you have got some fucking roots, honey. Permeable. You ain't going nowhere anytime soon. And in that foundation of a root system of within yourself, so you have achieved a level of four of wands energy, yes. But that is within you. That is within you. That is within yourself. And now the next step is to achieve that four of wands energy with another individual that has just as strong, if not a stronger root system. I was going somewhere with that, but I now I have. But anyway. Okay. Moonology deck is next. I'm telling y'all, man, I brought so many cards today. No. 
Moonology. Come on now. Come on now. No. Of course, it's the last place I look. All right, cycles, cyclical energy. Kind of wrap this up a little bit. So, oh, that's where I was going with that. You are a feminine that has grown into a very strong root system that is now able to enter the realm of the masculine, which is the external. This is the feminine being, if we're talking about a plant, the feminine being the root system, the subconscious, the masculine side being the tree, flower, plant that you see growing towards, reaching towards the sun. That's the masculine part of it. That's where you are now. You have developed your root system in the feminine. And now you're reaching for the sky. Now you're reaching towards your goals. Now you are fulfilling your physical development. You are growing into the plant that you are supposed to be, that you are meant to be. Reaching towards the sun, in the masculine, in that logic, in the, the pursuit, the goal, the reach, the extension. Two more shuffles here. Good. Very, very good. Last shuffle. That song is playing in my head again. Definitely listen to it. I'm going to shuffle one more time. I did get a card out. We're going to keep it. First card came out face down. We're going to look at that second. Two cards came out face up. First one is bring love into the situation, new moon in Aquarius. I do feel like that's what you're doing. What I'm seeing right now with through this card here, bring love into the situation. Love is filtering into your life. And the love that is filtering into your life right now is being used to sustain the plant that you are, but then further your growth towards maturity. Okay. That's why when it comes to external situations right now, you may be in a place of, I don't have love to give. You may have exited the element of codependency or the, level, the, the love lesson, the martyrdom lesson, the lesson that was, uh, was influencing you, uh, driving you to... Um, give love or be in loving situations when you didn't even necessarily have that love to give because you still needed to be using that for your own development. Well, now you find yourself in that place where you are conscious of this for whatever reason, whatever lessons you've learned, whatever uh, epiphanies you've had, whatever have brought you basically to the understanding of, I don't have that love to give because I'm currently in the process of giving that love to myself so I can grow to be mature enough once I mature, once I flower, once I fruit, then I can be giving that. Then I'm literally giving the love out. The love that is flowing within me, that has sustained me towards my maturity, is still flowing within me. And now, at that point, that love can be used to give. And when the plant is giving, it's flowering, it's fruiting. It's even, and, and, and those flowers, those fruits, generate the seeds that create the next generations, right? Bring love into the situation. That's what's happening right now. This love is filtering into you and is growing you. And because of that, prosperity lies ahead. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. New moon in Taurus? Taurus even. The, uh, hello. Aquarius? Aloofness? Providing love? Pouring out sustenance, nurturance, care, and compassion to those who need it and who needs it, everyone. So we're going to be unconditional with this, says Aquarius. We're not going to be attached. We're going to be detached, and we're just going to give the love. 
We're going to provide you with what it is you need to sustain, to grow, and to thrive within your life. To be sustained, to grow, and to thrive within your life. Aquarius. Building that structure, building that foundation, building that plant towards maturity to then be able to fruit, to give. Taurus. Card that has come out face down. Nothing is yet set in stone. New moon. Oh, I'm sorry. Mutable moon. Oh, yes. Ain't nothing set in stone. Quite frankly, my dearly, my darling dear. You may not reach maturity in this lifetime. Who knows? There are many variables for any plant in the wild, not even in the wild, in life, whether domesticated or not. There are any amount, infinite variables that could create a situation in which, in which a plant never reaches maturity. It gets cut down before it can or before it does whether it's physically cut down, literally cut down, or something happens to kill it, to take it out. That it, uh, hey, life and death. But see, that's why there are so many seeds because that optimizes, maximizes the chance of survival of the species. Doesn't mean you, may, you won't get another chance. Doesn't mean you're not deserving of it. Doesn't mean you're not worthy of it, but hey, that's the way the cookie crumbled. That's the way the chips were, were, were the, the, the dice were rolled. I don't know. That's what you needed to learn or experience in that lifetime for that experience for you to then take to the next experience and then grow and develop from there. You, you know what I mean? Nothing is yet set in stone. I'm not saying that to say, honey, so sorry to tell you this, all this great stuff, mm, but you're not going to make it. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> what I'm saying is nothing is yet set in stone. Okay. So don't worry. So, 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 so keep focusing on what is real. Keep focusing on what is in front of you right now. Keep focus on where you are, focusing on where you are in your process right now, knowing full well with the full confidence and belief and understanding that you are going to reach your goal. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. That is not even a question. The question here is how do you get there? And where you are right now is part of that process. And that's where you need to be focused because nothing is yet set in stone. Let's put a positive spin on this. You don't know how this is going to come about in the crazy amount of serendipitous ways, in the ridiculously perfect timing. Whereas you thought the timing might have been perfect in the past. Oh, no. How perfect this timing is, is so mind blowing. You could have never even be, tried to come up with it yourself. Nothing is yet set in stone other than your belief in yourself and your willingness and desire to manifest. That is set in stone and that's good. But when it comes to this physical representation, you know what? I'm good. Excellent. I like this, you guys. What's at the bottom of the deck? <laughs> Confidence is your key to, key to success, new moon in Leo. We have uh, three new moons and a mutable moon energy. Look at that. New moon in Taurus, Aquarius, and Leo with a mutable moon energy. Leo is the passion. Leo is the confidence. Leo is the knight of wands driving you forward. Also a little bit of that knight of swords and definitely the magician energy. Leo is also that four of wands energy. Leo would represent, and Taurus, actually, both Leo and, to oh, actually, technically speaking, Leo, Taurus, and Aquarius would represent the commitment energy. Aquarius would represent the benevolence of the four of wands because the four of wands is inclusive. The four of wands represents community. Taurus, Taurus would represent the physical foundation of the Four of Wands energy, because also the, I always, I say all the time that the Four of Wands could represent that physical foundation that you will ultimately be able to build from, build upon now. Your vision is set and now you can really start to flesh it out, we'll say. That would be the Taurus aspect of this Four of Wands. The Leo 
aspect of this Four of Wands is the passion, is the loyalty, is the commitment also. All three of these, because they are fixed signs, Taurus, Aquarius, and Leo, all would represent a level of commitment. But t Leo is the passion, is the fire within this Four of Wands. And because of their commitment oriented energy would thus also represent stability. Taurus, Aquarius, and Leo would represent the stable, stability, stable aspect and or nature of this Four of Wands. Excellent. Beautiful, you guys. What else do I have? What is this? This is love cards. No. What about this? This is the energy oracle deck. Okay. Let's do that too. The sun is at the bottom of the deck. Uh, Spirit is saying last message. Um, I don't even... Last message. Last shuffle. The sun. <laughs> okay. Closing message, please, Spirit. Indecision. Card number eight, reflective of this um, Eight of Swords energy. Okay. The indecision is not bad. It's a crossroads type energy. Um, but this is because, as we said, nothing is yet set in stone. When the vision is understood, when the proper pathway presents itself, you will make your decision. You have community that came out face down. Yeah, that's where the indecision lies. Where is your true community? Three of Cups. And remember on the feminine side, the subconscious side of this, we had the Three of Cups. So we have it again. Your indecision here is in essence saying, where do I fit? Where does this community flow? Where is this Three of Cups energy, this compassionate, caring, understanding community? I'm getting a level of communism, which makes sense. Community, communism. Not necessarily in a negative sense. Overall energy at the bottom of the deck is the angel of love. This is a love crusade, you guys. But this is real, true love. And you are this warrior. You are this crusader. You are this fighter by not standing down, by not giving in, by not compromising. And what I mean by not compromising is not compromising yourself. Because you were made in a very specific way and that is able to be loved, but also, hello, it's meant to be loved <laughs> for your uniqueness. And it's, it's standing up for love, real, true love by not conforming in order just to have some sort of stability or commitment. You don't need another person to be stable. I'm so surprised the Nine of Pentacles didn't come out here, but it's prevalent anyway, so it doesn't need to. You can stand in your Nine of Pentacles all on your own and be just fine. So if you're going to have love in your life, an external love, other than the love you are already flowing with from within, if you're going to have love in your life, it's going to be real love. It's not going to be some bullshit. It's not going to be some codependent shit. It's not going to be some manipulative shit. It's not going to be some convenient shit. It's going to be real love. It's going to be two people that naturally just gravitate towards each other because the love flows. And it's effortless. They don't really have to try. It's just there. It works. Okay. We're going to leave it there. I love you guys.